ended the program this year. Usually it was October 1st. Because of many things taking place here, we, we asked the current insurers to extend coverage to December 1st. Okay. December 1st? Correct. Uh, got it. Okay. I suppose, given the hour, we should hear a presentation from, unless there are questions that we want answered now, or we should hear from our other, the Lyra organization, are mm -hmm. they? Yeah, they're up there. I'll look at them. Okay. I'll do it. That's fine. Okay. Do you think you'll have other questions for us tonight? I don't think so. I think no, I think, I don't thank think you for so. expressing yeah, you yeah, yeah. declared yeah. you there very clearly as far as I was concerned. And we like the reduction in premium. That's okay. always good. So Utica is one yeah, of the one of the new companies that John has access to through us. Great. And they have special programs Nice. Uh -huh. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now going to hear from um, what are your names? Lyra. Yeah, but what are? I'm Tia. Okay. Uh, and why don't we go ahead and say what the acronym stands for? What? Let's hear what the acronym stands Libraries for. Libraries of Illinois Risk Agency. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So before we got started, I was going to come and tell you guys the Cubs were up one nothing. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, so oh, it's no. tied. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for thank you for both of that. Oh, so. Tebow wing it at home. Marcus no. ruined it. No, it's <laughs> still Who's good. Who's pitching? Thank you. Uh, it's uh, Hendricks. Is it? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Oh no. Um, oh, the brochures. I'm starting with the brochures because that's the easiest. And while you guys open up the brochures. I will let you know. That Can we might have to sit, sit, oh. sit and talk into the sit mic. Your and, and tell so us your different. large TV audience will then be able to hear me. you. You don't have to look at it. Just talk to there. <laughs> are we live? Share it. <laughs> we are live, oh, right? Good. Uh, my name is Marcus Henthorne. I'm with Gallagher. Uh, we're a brokerage firm in the United States that specializes in cooperative pool programs. Uh, we run about 150 of these types of programs around the country. Mm -hmm. um, nearly every school district, city, municipality buys insurance through a program like this. <coughs> um, and we had never had one for libraries, and Illinois was a great place to start. Um, the libraries are very strong in Illinois. We ended up partnering with the ILA. Uh, we're the endorsed broker of the American Library Association and felt that putting together a co program to cooperatively buy insurance would bring a lot of value to libraries. So when I say cooperative insurance or pooling, what I mean is what we've done is put together a program where you can actually buy insurance together with your peers through an intergovernmental agreement that allows you to buy more insurance for less money. So think of it like Costco, right? If I go to the gas station, buy a pack of gum, it costs me two bucks. If I go to Costco, I can get 10 packs for $5, right? So you get a lot more for less, and that's what we do. And so one of the things that we've also been able to do by do, uh, doing this and some of the benefits in the brochure is on top of bringing down costs and bringing in improved coverages, We've also been able to bring in a, a wide variety of value-added resources to libraries, including safety trainings, um, group purchasing for things like building appraisals, background checks, et cetera. And so what, what we've done today is we brought you a quote um, on behalf of Lyra, and what Lyra does is they'll go out into the marketplace on behalf of all the members within the library, and they'll buy insurance together. Um, they leverage their size to bring the marketplace down and the rates down and to get better coverage. Um, and we've been able to provide what we feel is a very competitive renewal. Um, and we've got a one-page summary that we'll go through uh, and just show you, based on the information we were provided and as much as we have, it'll give you just kind of a good idea on where that comparison will come in oh, at. Yeah, oh, it was in the I put it in your folder so that it's okay. already got one. Perfect. <laughs> um, this comparison is really the best that we could do with the information that we had, but it just gives you a good idea of how this program would work. Um, for example, if you see the flood limit, um, it's a pool limit for Lira of $12 million. We don't anticipate all of our 45 members flooding at one time. 
Um, so having $12 million, should you have a flood, is better than potentially maybe having $1 million. And you're only paying $1,000 deductible to access that insurance. Uh, currently, based on your expiring, you had a $25,000 deductible. So that just kind of shows you a little bit of the difference in how we can kind of control those costs and deductibles. Now, when we first walked in, you all saw that we, we know John very well. Uh, we know Nimble Financial. We've, act, we've, we've worked with his firm in the past uh, with other libraries. However, recently, uh, John's firm was acquired uh, by a firm out of Iowa. And so we had a conversation with John, and we talked about it because in the past, we would actually team up with his agency and work together. Um, the acquisition uh, by a larger broker in the state, we ended up bringing this to our board, uh, which is comprised of fellow libraries. And on the back of your brochure, mm -hmm. you'll see the board members. And we said, you know, what do you guys want to do in regards to local agents that represent current libraries? And they said, we prefer to go direct to the libraries. And if the libraries elect to use the savings provided by Lira to still keep their local brokers on, they have that option to do so. So we're still willing to work with John. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you the lowest price you can pay today with the option to still keep John involved if you want to, but just know that we're going to have to create a separate line item to keep him involved, and it would likely be on a consulting basis. Um, hmm. With that being said, do we have the PowerPoint? Do we want to go through that real quick? Or what are, does so, anybody have any questions yeah. to start? Um, a really minor question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think our friends are covered under our current policy. Mm -hmm. We sort of asked John to cover right. the friends. Mm -hmm. Would our friends... Yep. So, does our policy here cover, in addition to employees' acts, the acts of volunteers in the library? We have a volunteer accident policy okay. as well. Is that so. included in this? Yes. yes. So I think it, um, it will make sense to kind of just, this is a high-level PowerPoint that we typically will go over with boards or executive directors wanting to learn more about Lira. So it'll show you all the coverages and what they mean and all of that. And we could go through this in about 10 minutes, give or take with questions. So I think it'll just make sense if we, and I apologize, this wasn't provided. Oh, oh, this is not, oh, something Sorry. Oh, that's okay. This is just yeah. something that just really summarizes okay. everything that you've seen. We use pretty pictures and numbers. <laughs> if you're going to, if you flip to the very first page, this just gives you a little bit of statistics about the program. We've got 48 members that have currently joined. In the last, oh man, three weeks, we've added four new members. We've added Cook Memorial Public Library, we've added Downers Grove, we've added Joliet, and we just added Evergreen Park the other day. Um, we now insure over a billion dollars in total insured values. So when you think about that, when we go to the carriers in the marketplace, we're talking about billions of dollars. So adding in a $10 million library, you can very, do it very cheap. Um, they're looking at it at a large scale, so it provides a lot of leverage. Um, we've more than doubled the size of the program since inception. We're insuring almost 3,200 employees throughout the state with 75 vehicles and five bookmobiles. Any, we, and what bicycles? Huh? Any bicycles? Any bicycles? <laughs> no. Well, yeah. Interesting enough that we were just at a meeting yesterday. Yeah, who we asked just, us about uh -huh. their bicycle they program. They they would be covered if you had bicycles. Yes. But well, we have a book bike. We, we don't have bicycles. Bike. Yep, yeah. and they yeah. deliver the bikes <laughs> through the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is a new and common thing, and this is one of the great things about buying insurance with your peers is these ideas are quickly spreading among the members, and we can answer this question at one board meeting in front of all of our members and get the same message com clearly communicated to everyone. Um, if you flip the page to the next page. That shows you our current members. Um, you, what you're going to see on this page is you're going to see um, executive directors at some of these libraries have, have been awarded Librarian of the Year, ILA luminaries. Um, we've got Rails on here. We've got the actual ILA itself that's a member. So there's definitely some, some leading names throughout our membership list. Mm -hmm. If you flip to the next page, I'm just going to talk about some of the benefits with what we've talked about already, and that's broader coverage and increased limits. You can get savings over conventional insurance. Um, I will give you an example of how it provides stability compared to a first dollar marketplace. If I'm to talk to Wilmette today and sell you insurance for let's say $50,000 a year and a tornado is to come through and take out the building and causes a $10 million claim, uh, likely your insurance is going to increase substantially in the following year, just like if you were to total your vehicle, right, in personal lines. Uh, I do a very similar pool like this in Iowa, and uh, this past April we did actually have a catastrophic tornado take out an entire school district. The school district was on one city block. It wiped away half the town and the whole block. Uh, that district itself, due to the insulation of their peers, received a 4% decrease at renewal this year. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we place over $2 billion worth of insurance for them in that program. Uh, in total insured value, so it's almost twice the size of Lear as today. Uh, but it just gives you an idea that, uh, you know, one year it may be your peers that have a bad year, and the next year it may be you, but ultimately our goal is to keep a stable premium going forward. Just a curiosity question, where was that in Iowa? Uh, I was in Seymour, Iowa, so uh, down south by almost to Kansas. If right. they were mm -hmm. three miles more south, it wouldn't have been in the program, and it would have <laughs> been in Kansas, but it wasn't. So. <laughs> what percentage has your insurance gone up since you started? Uh, we actually, so that's that's a very that's a that's a loaded question, <laughs> um, because one of the reasons that uh, it's loaded is because our rates have actually gone down every year consistently going forward. Uh, that's just due to as we grow the program, we get more leverage and purchasing power. Mm -hmm. However, since inception, we have increased coverages. So we used to have five million in flood, five million in quake. Five million in excess liability, no sexual abuse, and no cyber, for example. Now, if you look at the program, we've got 12 million in flood, 12 million in earthquake, 10 million in umbrella and sexual abuse, and we do have cyber coverage up to a million dollars. So we've added all these coverages into the program that we feel are necessary to best protect libraries based on the risks. So cost maybe has gone up, I think, one year, about six or seven percent. Uh, but for the most part, it's gone down at least 3 to 6% every year. Hmm. Um, this year for the renewal, I'll just let you guys know, we're going to see some of the limits, for example, like flood and earthquake go up to about $15 million. Um, We're going to have cyber be, uh, have, a, have a large rate decrease on the, on the overall uh, program, and we're going to be presenting this on Thursday to our board for approval, which then goes to the full membership on November 8th for everybody to then have a vote on what the program is going to look like. So yeah, that's important to note that all of the coverages that are included in LEAR have been voted on by the membership, and LEAR is actually owned by its members. Marcus and I are just vendors of LIRA. We've been hired on by LIRA once we created the program, but once the program took off, um, it was no longer our program. It's now the, the membership's program. So It's run by a board of directors comprised of um, libraries. We have had claims on our insurance. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the, the um, most, you know, one that comes readily to mind is that we had a car twice, twice. <laughs> step on the gas instead of the brake. And, You're not the first. And um, mm -hmm. there did need to be some construction. Mm -hmm. And John was very helpful mm -hmm. in working that. Who do we, right. you know, who are you going to call? What do we do? When, if we incur a loss, a really great who question. do we call? Yeah, mm -hmm. so one of the things about having um, this many members and this much leverage in the marketplace is you can actually acquire more resources that are more beneficial to the library. So, and I agree, John is very good at his job, right? And he's a local agent. He provides that, that, um, that ability to come out on site and to help you out. But what we do is we actually hire what's called a third party claims administrator. All they do is handle claims all day, every day, and we've actually got assigned adjusters to your program. So you talk to the same person. So if you have a property loss, you'll call Brian Harp. If you have a liability co loss, you'll call the liability adjuster. If you have work comp, you'll call the Hartford. So, And we have um, like a sheet and also a small wallet card, and it just has your 911 numbers on it. So for instance, one of our members had a um, fire, but it was arson in their elevator after hours it was about 8 30. um so what they did was they just called in the claim at, at the after hours number and it got taken care of as soon as Immediately. possible and, so, we had people out yeah. on site that night cleaning up it was uh it was an arson claim by a, a teenager um, unfortunately, when you start a fire in a government building, that's a felony. I did learn that mm -hmm. um, in a library is a government building. So uh, they did they did persecute him, but they got the claim cleaned up, paid for, and taken care of. One of the good things is that let's go back to this tornado claim if there's a loss. John's been doing this a long time. I don't know how many times he's handled a tornado claim or a total catastrophic loss. Um, I had never before Iowa, but one of the things is that our TPA that handles that claim has handles 50 catastrophic claims a year. And so when the tornado hit, I, myself, everybody else on the team was like, we knew we had to do something, but we weren't really sure of the next steps. You call the TPA, they're like, here's what you need to do, here's who you need to secure, here's the type of contractors you need to have come on site, it doesn't matter what the cost is, get this, this, and this cleaned up, make sure people are safe, checklist, checklist, checklist. Within 24 hours, we had an entire emergency response team on site ready to rebuild the school. Um, just so everybody's aware, as school went back into session, 
Uh, about five months later, they rebuilt an entire school and have the students back on site going forward. Um, one of the things, potential return of surplus. This is actually a really big benefit in Lira because the way that it works is right now you're paying, you're writing a check for insurance, right? You pass that check to an insurance company, they hand you a piece of paper. If you don't have a claim, next year you rewrite the check, they hand you a piece of paper. If you do have a claim, they cover it if you have coverage for that. Um, in Lira, we do what's called fixed and variable costs on our pricing sheets, where a portion of your premiums will go into a variable fund that is used to pay claims on behalf of the pool, and it's put into a loss fund. And so right now, there's about $225,000 a year put into this loss fund. The first $50,000 of every claim comes out of this fund, okay, to pay claims. It just slips in the page. Oh, it there is, we go. It's a visual instead of a... So I'm going to try to do this upside down, so bear with me. Let's see how good I can do this, and I'm going to use a pen to point. The very first column that you see with the red box on top, that's your property column. Going on the same tornado claim, if we have a $10 million tornado claim takeout, will met. Here's what would happen. We would go to Heather and she would cut a check for $1,000 deductible. That's all your property deductible is in Lira is $1,000. Mm -hmm. The next $50,000 would come out of this fund over here, this green box. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next million dollars would come from our first uh, package carrier, Brit Insurance, and the next $9 million of the $10 million claim would be paid by the excess property carrier or, or Hartford. They cover up to $300 million. So if multiple libraries were hit by the same storm, you have up to $300 million per occurrence 